how the alternator works, no? But uh, the generator is basically an engine with an alternator here. For that reason, if you see the theory, how many type of generators are? Two, two. two types. Alternator type, alternator type, or generator type. What is the other name for generator? Armature type. Armature type. Okay. Two types. But uh, both of them at the end are the same. Why why this is called alternator type? Because the excitation, the electromagnets are produced on the on the, the rotor. The excitation with the brushes is here in the rotor. Is clear my friends? In the alternator type. Oh in the in the stator type the excitation is produced on the stator. stator and the AC power is produced in the rotor. It's opposite. But at the end of, of the day, it's the same. What is more efficient? Alternator type or generator type? Both of them are the same. Some manufacturers, like, a, like a Northern Lights, uh, Western Big, uh, they produce the majority of your generators alternator type, and the other ones generator type. Both of them are equally efficient. I don't see the difference. I have years of years of years working with generators, and uh, both of them are highly efficient. Uh, my, my strong area is generators. Uh, this is the area that uh, I work for a long time, working, rep preparing, installing, calculating generator. For that reason, at the end of the chapter, I'm going to explain the procedure to calculate a generator for that boat. The people say, oh, I have this boat, and I want to install a generator. What generator is recommended? Normally, the people say, oh, oh five kilowatts. How do you calculate five kilowatts only checking the boat outside? Because the length of the boat, <laughs> because the weight of the boat, it's not according with that. It's according with how many loads you have, Oh, I want to install a big refrigerator, two air condition equipment, seven fans, light, this. You add it, you add it, you calculate the total power in kilowatts. And with that power, you convert uh, uh, in horsepower to calculate the engine of the generator, and you calculate the generator. This, I'm going to explain the procedure. It's, it's simple, but uh, you need to know how many loads are in my boat. Right? Yeah. Okay. Other of the of the of the inconvenient no other of the important things when you when you try to install a generator in a boat, one thing is the calculation size in the generator. And we are going to learn that procedure later. The other one is where I am going to install the generator inside of the boat, because to install a generator, the generator is composed by the engine. The engine, gas or diesel, and the alternator or back end. Anybody follow me? What is better, with diesel engine or with a gasoline engine? In my opinion, with diesel engine. It's more reliable. It's more efficient. Uh, today, today, a lot of uh, boat owners with gasoline boats with outboard gasoline boats, they install diesel generators. We installed one, no, Danny? Yeah, on a, on a Recently, in a boat, yeah, a with two outboard gasoline, no? Yeah, it's a gasoline mercury uh, uh, four-stroke outboards. You put an air conditioning system and a generator. And generator diesel. Tell them where that generator was. At because the diesel is, we are going to learn in the next coming class, in diesel and gasoline, uh, diesel uh, is too simple. Uh, for diesel, you only need compress the air, in, inject the fuel, and ignite. You don't need wires, you don't need nothing. The, the diesel engines are too simple. The diesel engines are more reliable, more efficient, more efficient. Okay, for that reason, the people prefer every day more and more diesel generators. As far as the positioning of the generator, explain to them where that generator yeah. is at. Now we are going to check what, where can I install the generator inside of the engine room. 
uh, there are different places. Normally, the people, uh, the people say, oh, in that corner, because this is the only area that I have in, in the engine room. We are going to verify if that area is good for the engine, because we need to we need verify where I am going to bring the fuel. From the, from the starboard side ta tank or from the port side tank? Where we are going to return the fuel because if the generator is diesel, you need fuel coming in and fuel coming out, the return. And uh, the exhaust pipe, where I am going to put the exhaust outlet? And uh, the batteries, where will be located the batteries? And the raw water pump. Where should be located the raw water pump with raw water? Because the engine, internally, you have coolant, exactly the same like your car. But the coolant is cooled, not with the radiator and the fan that you have in your car. It's cooled for a heat exchanger with raw water. OK? All right. I need raw water. I need fuel. I need the uh, exhaust. I need the uh, batteries. And uh, I need the remote panel. I need to identify where I am going to locate the remote panel, where I am going to locate the exhaust manifold and the, and the muffler, where I am going to locate the batteries. The batteries should be exclusive batteries for this. Can I use the same batteries of the engine? No. Can I share the house battery? No. It's an exclusive battery, exclusive for the star motor of the generator. That's okay? Exclusive battery. The fuel tank, can I use the starboard side tank or the port side? Yes. 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 This is it's normal. As close as possible. If, if the generator will be close to the starboard side, OK, use that tank. That's, that's normal. But uh, you need separate raw water filter, raw water pump, raw water through hole for, for this generator. Can I use the same through hole for the starboard engine? No. Starboard engine with your own through hole for raw water, and the generator with your own through hole for raw water. Fuel, fuel line separated from generator and the engine. Completely separated, isolated. The, the generator is a, an individual unit. Ready? And the remote panel. I got a couple of questions. So why would the battery just separately be for the generator? Oh, okay. Basically because of you remember we have a normally four or five group of batteries in a typical boat, no? One group of batteries for cranking, other group of batteries for a house, other group of batteries for uh, uh, generators, thrusters. other group of batteries for bow thrusters, and probably in a big boat, other for electronics, no? Okay, uh, for example, the, the electronics batteries should be exclusive for electronics. When we talk about electronics, we are talking about the a radar, the GPS, the transducer, uh, the fish finder, all of those electronic devices. Those electronic devices should have a separate group of batteries exclusive for the electronics. What happens if you connect the electronic devices connected with the cranking batteries? If it dies. The cranking batteries, especially in big boats, diesel engines, introduce a lot of noise interference, especially during the cranking and during the operation also and you affect the performance of the screen, the performance of uh, uh, the, 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 the displays. That's not good for electronics. Uh, the cranking battery should be exclusive for cranking or engines. The house battery should be for house. And, but uh, the generator is considered another motor. It's another engine, no? You, you need an exclusive battery for the generator. Normally, I install this one with a switch selector with a bypass to the house batteries. In case of emergency, this battery is not working, I use the house battery. But this is in some specific de design. I recommend exclusive, and, and the manufacturer recommend exclusive batteries. If you install this one uh, with the batteries of house or cranking, uh, if you have problems in the future and the inspector enter in the boat, immediately check that the pen of other and no warranty. You need to be careful with that. Okay. The recommendation is separate group of batteries. What type of batteries uh, is recommended for, for this? A cranking? Cranking. Cranking batteries. Because the battery is used only to crank the engine. After that, the generator continues running, producing your own power with the alternator, with the alternator of, uh, of, the, of the engine. Yeah? Producing your own power. The battery is exclusive to, to start. 
After that, the generator produces your own DC power with the alternator of the engine, and of course the DC, uh, excuse me, the AC with the back end. Ready? Okay, great. This is the engine. Don't forget raw water, fuel, batteries, and um, you need the raw water, fuel, batteries, control valve, and the exhaust. The exhaust. That's the most important part. Okay. What is the most critical uh, factor in the decision where I am going to locate the generator? Here or here or here or here or here. What do you think is the most critical factor? Water line. Accessible. Accessible is number one. Water line. The level of the water line. Where is located the level of the water line? Like Danny mentioned before. A generator located below the water line uh, is not because the raw water enter and touch the generator, no, 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 no. It's because it's easy, if the generator is located below the water line, it's easy that when the pistons are moving down, suction salt water, because the salt water pass through the heat exchanger close to the exhaust manifold. Right now I am going to explain that. It's easy that the, the, the piston suction water if the generator is below the raw water. Who has knowledge about engines, gas or diesel? A little, you, you, Danny, also, you. All right, I, I want to explain something. I want to explain something quickly. Uh, in the next course, I will explain with a lot of details in the videos of gas and diesel. Oh, thank you, that's the, the anti side. Pay attention, we are going to think, who know what, why you say this engine is four strokes or two strokes? No, the, the, open the amount of, of movement of the piston, yeah. no? Okay, I'm going to explain quickly the four strokes. But uh, pay attention, this is nice explanation. This is the piston, and this is the head with the valves. Intake valves and exhaust valves. All right. The piston, is, this is the, normally you have four strokes. Intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Four strokes, four movements. Ready? Okay. Normally you start with the intake. In the intake, in gasoline engines, you suction air and fuel, fuel in gasoline. In diesel, in the intake, you suction air. pure air, pure air. Okay. We are going to simulate the intake, the intake movement. The piston is going down. 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 And what about the valves? They the open. open. Both valves open? No. Only intake, intake open. Intake. intake open. And the piston going? Down. down and fill the cylinder with air or with the mixture. Ready? Mm -hmm. Now the piston is in the bottom. What happened with the valves? Close. 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 And the piston start to? Close. Compress, 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 compress. What happened when the mixture is fully compressed? Swirl. The spark plug ignite Ignites. and send the piston? Down. Boom! Down! Explosion. Number three. What happened with the valves during the explosion? During the compression? Close. During the explosion? Close. And now the piston goes up in exhaust. Exhaust valve open, intake stay closed. The piston goes up and the gases goes out. Nice. Those are the four strokes. Nice, no? Okay.